Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of the Brewster F2A Buffalo variation. Using the original XF2A-1 prototype in early 1939 for more tests, Brewster installed the more powerful Wright R1820-40 engine, pushing out 1200 horsepower. With the installation of a larger engine, center of gravity and cowling issues soon came about. This was sorted by shortening the fuselage by 5 inches forward of the wing and redesigning the engine cowling's aerodynamics. Now known as the XF2A-2 in July 1939, this aircraft now pushed around 340 miles per hour at 16,500 feet and it had a rate of climb that dropped down to around 2,500 feet per minute and the range was extended by an extra 600 miles. Additional changes included increasing the area of the tail fin for better directional stability. The U.S. Navy ordered 43 F-2A-2s in fall of 1939. Remember, at this time 43 Finnish airframes and a spare went to Finland, so the U.S. Navy struck a deal with Brewster to receive the exact number of diverted planes. The U.S. Navy then revised their contract to receive the more modern and powerful F-2A-2s instead. Eight of the already delivered F-2A-1s in U.S. service would be sent back to Brewster to be upgraded to the Dash 2 standard. Supplemental cowl changes from the XF2A-2 prototype included larger air intake, relocating the exhaust tubs to be higher on the cowling, and moving any of the gas vents from the rear of the aircraft to the cowling. A cuffed Curtis Electric prop replaced the Hamilton standard, and a larger prop spinner was introduced as well. Armament was upgraded to four Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns, replacing the single 30 caliber Browning in the cowling, and provisions for two bomb racks holding 100 pounds under each wing were added as well. The ventral belly windows for downward visibility were slightly altered. Two oval panes replaced the rear two rectangular panes. By December of 1940, the allotted F-2A-2s were delivered to the U.S. Navy, due to 40 of which being diverted to Belgium before the U.S. contract was filled. As these planes surged with the U.S. Navy, failures and issues with carrier landings led Brewster to redesign and strengthen the landing gear and struts. This problem, however, would never fully be resolved. A unique modification occurred when Fighting Squadron 2, known as VF-2, on USS Lexington CV-2, replaced the starboard radio mast with a small stub mast bolted on the port wing. This change helped reduce drag and the vibration from the mast. However, they were the only squadron to change the mast. Like Finland in late 1939, Belgium looked to purchase US-made combat aircraft for their air force. The U.S. Navy again agreed to send their allotted Brewster F-2A-2s to a foreign country, this time Belgium, under the export designation Model 339B. Similar to the denavalization process of Model 239 for Finland, the 40 Belgium-contracted F-2As additionally omitted the RDF gear behind the pilot. An export approved 1100 horsepower Wright R1920-G105 engine was linked to a Curtis Electric cuffed propeller and additional modifications placed a tail cone to cover the landing hook opening. A straight pipette tube replaced the L-shaped one, and a fixed gun sight replaced the telescopic gun sight. Four 50 caliber machine guns were to be maintained as armament. However, it was to be the Belgian supplied and installed based on their contract with Brewster. An initial example was sent in April 1940 to Belgium. However, Belgium was overrun by the Germans in May of 1940. The ship carrying this Model 339B was diverted to France and arrived in late May. As France fell in June to the Germans, the Luftwaffe captured the created plane. The next batch of six were on the way to France as it fell, and were diverted to French Martinique in the Caribbean. They sat on a field in limbo, waiting for their future homes. Due to political reasons, which I will make brief, the Model 339Bs were destroyed by, quote, unknown agents on the island a few months later. The U.S. feared that the Vichy French, now aligned with Germany, would use the planes against the Allies and or the Panama Canal. The remaining 33 contracted F-2As were diverted to Britain by the Belgian government in exile in mid-1940. They were fitted with British .303 caliber machine guns in the wings and 50 caliber guns in the cowling. It was quickly decided that these planes would be used only for overseas use due to several reasons. Some of these reasons included a lack of protected fuel tanks and reflector gun sight, redundant control cables, and to top it all off, everything was in French. 18 went aboard a British aircraft carrier, but the lack of tail hooks made them extremely inadequate, and trials were stopped immediately. Others were sent to the island of Crete the day before Germany invaded the island. Luckily, most were able to take off and were evacuated to Egypt, 
one may have been left behind for Germans to capture. All remaining Model 339Bs that were not in use or survived the German onslaught were used as spur hulks or airframes for mechanics to learn on. In early 1940, the British government searched for additional sources for combat aircraft, looking abroad to Brewster. Split over two contracts, the British ordered 170 Model 339Es, also known as the Buffalo Mark I. As another example of a denabilized F2A-2, the tail hook, life raft, and RDF antenna were removed, and there was a modification for the tail cone. An exporter-approved Wright R1820-G105 cyclone engine was cuffed to a 10-foot, 1-inch Hamilton Standard prop. As for Buffalo Mark I specific changes, these consisted of removing the retractable tail wheel in place for a larger tail wheel better suited for land base, adding an armored windscreen and armored plating behind the pilot, and replacing the ring and bead sight for a British Mark III reflector gun sight. An interesting modification for this model was the inclusion of a singular movable oval panel window on the port side of the canopy with all squared off corners. This is a side note, but all canopy windows of the previous F2As and export models had rounded windows. Armament stayed the same as the F2A-2s with four Browning M250 caliber machine guns. With all of these modifications and armor added, the Buffalo Mark I weighed around 900 pounds heavier than the F2A-2s, reducing the top speed to 330 miles per hour, decreasing the climb rate, and caused pilots to land at a higher speed due to the higher weight. The acquisition of engines soon became an issue for the Buffalo Mark I. As there was an exponential need for American aircraft production in 1940, the Curtis Wright Corporation, the builder of the Cyclone series engines, had troubles meeting contract demands. For the first contract, the 1100 horsepower Wright Cyclone 1820-G105 engine was installed for this export model, but a sufficient supply was not available for the second contract. Brewster equipped the next batch of planes with used engines from airliners such as the Douglas DC-3. Wright would refurbish and bring the engines up to the 1820-G105 standard, but these engines would later become a maintenance nightmare. Another oddity of this model was the difference of fuel pressurization equipment from other F2A-2s. Fuel starvation would occur above 18,000 feet, and British pilots would have to use their emergency fuel pump hand pumps above that altitude. Not ideal during combat. These planes were sent out to squadrons in British-held colonies in Asia and the Far East in late 1941. With moderate successes in the defense of Burma, Singapore, Malaya, around two-thirds of the 150 Buffalo Mark I's that were sent overseas for combat were destroyed by the Japanese advances from December 1941 to March 1942. The Buffalo Mark I's were facing planes with superior maneuverability, such as the Imperial Japanese Navy Mitsubishi A6M20 and the Japanese Army Air Force Nakajima Ki-43 Oscars. These Buffaloes were sometimes modified to carry less fuel and ammunition, as well as lightening of armament to improve performance. The 50 caliber guns were replaced with British .303 caliber guns to lessen the performance gap, however, to no avail. In 1940, the Netherlands, now with the government in exile, was planning their defense of the Dutch East Indies against the impending Japanese expansion due to their oil resources. The Dutch sought out American-made fighter aircraft that were using Wright Cyclone engines, as planes in their air force currently are already use these engines, making it easier to supply parts and train crews on. One of the aircraft ordered by the Dutch was Brewster's F-2A-2, ordering 144, export designated the Model 339C. As these were ordered in 1940, Brewster was still running into the problem with the Curtis Wright Corporation not being able to give them ample supply of engines. The Dutch cut their order in half to 72 and supplied their own engines for the first 24 aircraft. These would be designated as the Model 339C. This situation was a near identical repeat to the British Model 339E, also known as the Buffalo Mark I, where remanufactured engines were brought to export approved 1820 G105 specifications. The next group of 48 had engines supplied by Brewster, named the Model 339D. These carried upgraded 1200 horsepower Wright 1820 G205 engines. All 72 aircraft were mated with a 10 foot 3 inch Curtis Logic prop. Similar to the Model 339B and 339Es, the 339C slash Ds were denabilized as well. Changes included replacing the 50 calibers in the nose with .303 caliber machine guns. The Dutch replaced the small retractable tail wheel for a larger wheel 
for the use on land bases. An interesting problem arose when the Dutch separately ordered self-sealing fuel tanks, gun heaters, armored windscreens, and reflector gun sights. Most of the equipment did not make it to Brewster on time to get installed. The around 70 aircraft that arrived in the Dutch East Indies were equipped with a wide variety of equipment actually being installed. An example of this being, some planes came with reflector gun sights, while most planes relied on the ring and beat sight. Many of these planes were field modified to make life easier on the Dutch pilots. Assigned to two squadrons, 24 model 339C-Ds were assigned to each in mid-1941 on Java. The rest served as training aircraft for an Air Force flight school as more pilots arrived. By November 1941, the Dutch were banking on the Japanese pushing an offensive, so their planes were relocated to Borneo. The flight school was closed, and two more squadrons were formed up with those planes. The Model 339C-Ds fought with the British after the Japanese attacked Singapore on December 8, 1941. As the Japanese onslaught advanced, the Dutch retreated back to Java. Facing overwhelming opposition, advanced aircraft like the Mitsubishi A6M20 and constant bombing raids, the Dutch Buffaloes were whittled down to a non-combatant force by the Japanese in early March as Java fell. A few were captured, but most were destroyed in combat. Even against the insurmountable odds, the victory to loss ratio was around 2 to 1 for the Model 339Cs slash Ds. The U.S. Navy made a final order for the F-2A in early 1941, ordering 108 F-2A-3s. The best way to describe the F-2A-3 is a better armored, more sluggish version of the F-2A-2. A few notable modifications were made on this version. The planes gained a 10-inch extension to the fuselage forward of the wing, later leaning to center of gravity problems. Fuel capacity was now at 240 gallons, increasing the range to 1,680 miles. To meet the combat standards of 1941, the Dash 3s gained a considerable amount of weight for extra armor and ammunition. To reduce some of the weight, the prop sprinter was omitted, and the metal framed canopy were replaced with plexiglass sections pieced together, improving visibility. Weighing around a half ton more than the original F2A 1s, the max speed fell to 321 miles per hour, and the surface ceiling dropped to around 32,000 feet. Rate of climb was reduced drastically to around 2,300 feet per minute. One modification tested early on was replacing the wing mounted 50 caliber machine guns with 20 millimeter Hispano Souzas. This never moved forward. In the summer of 1941, F2A-3s made their way into U.S. Navy squadrons. Soon after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, the F2A-3s were replaced by the Grumman F4 Wildcats. The F2A-3s soon made their way to a few U.S. Marine Corps squadrons in early 1942. The Brewster F2A made its first American victory in March 1942, taking down a Japanese HAK Emily float plane near Midway Atoll. The next time this F2A would see combat was during the Battle of Midway in June 1942 with Marine Fighter Squadron 221 known as VMF-221. This squadron was a mix of 20 F2A-3s and 5 Grumman F4Fs. Similar to the British and Dutch Buffaloes earlier in the year, the F2A-3 had a difficult time matching up against the Mitsubishi A6M-20 naval fighter. Out of the 20 F2A-3s based on Midway during the battle, 13 were shot down due to the plane's performance, pilot error, and tactical reasons. The squadron would take down two Zeros and seven torpedo bombers even being extremely outnumbered. After the unfortunate and lackluster performance at Midway, all versions of the F-2A were still in service, were pulled from front lines and used as trainers into 1944. In early 1941, the Dutch planned to purchase 20 more F-2A aircraft. These aircraft, equipped Model 339-23, were similar to the Dutch ordered Model 339D, to vary in three ways. Still with a shortage of right engines, this batch needs to be equipped with a 950 horsepower Wright 1820-G5 engine, remanufactured by Wright from Dutch DC-3 airliner. This version of the plane features a 10-inch fuselage extension and armored plating similar to those in the F2A-3 production models. The Dutch up-armored their new model 339-23s, replacing the 2.303 caliber machine guns in the nose on the 339C-Ds for 50 calibers, bringing firepower to four 50 caliber machine guns. 
With the downgraded power from the remanufactured engine and this new extra weight, the Model 339-23s were the most anemic and underperforming Brewster F2A model yet. Originally meant for the Dutch East Indies, deliveries started from January to March 1942. However, as the Dutch East Indies fell in March 1942, these planes were diverted to Australia. Initially assigned to the U.S. Army Air Force, they were handed over to the Australians, who needed more aircraft to fill their ranks. The Australians would take the wing guns out to increase maneuverability. Ranging from use as reconnaissance aircraft, air defense aircraft for Australian cities, and gunnery trainers for the United States, the Model 339-23s were scrapped from and erased from existence by 1944. Luckily, none saw combat. Additional proposals for changes to the F-2A included folding wings, a pressurized cockpit, and a four blade prop. However, all these were soon abandoned as the U.S. Navy decided to suspend the model's development in 1941. State of the art at the time of its conception, the Brewster F-2A was an example of a pre-war design that became obsolete within a few years, but it did hold its ground and fared with moderate success in the Pacific. Soon after mid-1942, the major allied nations abandoned the F-2A from frontline service for new designs due to its reported underperformance against insurmountable odds and were relegated to advanced trainers. Only the Finns would use the F-2A design throughout the rest of the war with great success. Thanks for watching. If you have any other planes you'd like to see a variance video on, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.